Hello, welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. My name is Martin Turner. Today we're going to talk about creating HTML5 layouts uh, and exporting them. Well, um, one of the big new features of Cork Express 2016 was uh, introducing HTML5 publications or HTML5 uh, web apps. But Quark Express 2017 really enhances and takes it into its own space. So let's go to the screen. You see I've got some devices here uh, ready to play with in a minute. Um, but uh, over here I've got a, a not particularly wonderfully designed, but uh, interesting enough um, uh, little layout where uh, I've, I've just got one effect applied. So this is about selfies. So the joke is, uh, what's, the, um, what's the true difference between humans uh, and animals? And of course, the answer is humans are the only species that take selfies. So um, over here, we've got a Baal, uh, a kind of Phoenician selfie. We've got a, a, a Buddha, which is still a representation of a human, even though uh, to be of a god. We've got a, a Mexican, uh, Mesoamerican uh, mask. We've got a, uh, an enlightenment gentleman, rather chubby. We've got, I think that's Socrates, it might be Seneca, probably should have checked that. And we've got one of the Lewis chessmen uh, representing Scandinavian culture. So Scandinavian, uh, Greek or Roman, uh, uh, Buddhist South Asian, uh, Phoenician, uh, so Levantine, uh, Enlightenment European North American, and Mesoamerican. And I took all these pictures in the British Museum uh, where they're very happy for you to take pictures. Well, uh, the only effect I've got applied is a uh, picture zoom. So we're not going to go today through all the other effects. There isn't time to do everything. And you'll see that uh, in this picture, um, there is more to the picture uh, than, as it were, meets the eye. There's, there's more to it. And when you do picture zoom, it will show the rest of that cropped picture. So, so don't crop uh, for digital layout uh, with the expectation that your uh, secret uh, other stuff is not going to be shown because it will if you use picture zoom. Now we could have done 360 degree image, we could have done animation, you could have things uh, flowing in from the left and the right. Uh, we'll just very quickly um, uh, have a, uh, we'll give that a bit of a color um, so we can see it. Uh, you'll see animation, preview that, flows in. Uh, we could do, um, get rid of that, we could do uh, Audio, have it play an audio file, watch out. Those audio files can be very big. If it's just a ping, that's great. If you want to play a whole song, I did that, uh, and it crashed somebody's server when we were playing a whole album. Um, if you want to use a button, you can do many things with buttons, and you can have multiple things done by the same button. So you can have it play an object, and also play a sound file, such as a ping or pause the sound file. And you can have it show a pop-up and hide a pop-up. The thing to remember with these pop-ups, which are really useful, they show a different layout on the screen, uh, is that uh, you've got to also have a way of making it disappear afterwards. Otherwise, it just comes on and stays out. So you've got to put a button on the pop-up to turn it off. You can do pictures in, we're going to look at that. Scroll zone lets you scroll through text on another layout. Really interesting feature, try it out. Slideshow, as it says, video, uh, with video, watch out because the URL for um, YouTube is the embed URL, not the share URL. And that's going to go horribly wrong uh, if you don't get that right. And it'll just not work. Nine times out of ten, if you've got a problem with video and it's YouTube, check the URL as the correct one. And then we can do a web view. And web view, of course, means you can then go to any, uh, any code you've got uh, already created, uh, or you can go to any sub page. So you can use your MailChimp stuff, you can go to SurveyMonkey, you can do all kinds of things. But right now, today, we're just going to look at these uh, slideshow things. Now, before we go any further, I, I want to show you adaptive layout. Now, we're going to look at this in more detail another week, but for now, we're going to duplicate iPad H and we're going to have uh, iPad Android 4.3. Uh, and we're going to do uh, portrait. Uh, so uh, I've got adaptive layout on here. So apply adaptive scaling. And uh, what this is going to do, it's going to move everything around, but it's also going to synchronize box attributes and content. We'll come to that in a second. But for now, let's do yes. Um, 
Uh, and as you can see, I need a little bit of uh, moving stuff around now. So my, my things have moved a little bit, but basically the sizes are correct. So I've got my Scandinavian area here. That's got to go up there with that picture. I've got my Greco-Roman, uh, it's going to go there. Uh, I've got my uh, Phoenician Levantine over here. Uh, I've got my South Asian uh, over there. Um, uh, I've got my uh, Enlightenment Europe uh, and North America here, and I've got my Mesoamerican here. Uh, and of course I can do more with this because I've got more space to play with. So let's have Baal really big. He can walk right off the page at me. And of course we could do various things with that. Okay, I'm going to do it again uh, because this time I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to do uh, iPhone 6 uh, and uh, Portrait. Uh, okay, um, and let me just uh, reduce the size of that. And then again from iPad H, I'm going to do uh, Duplicate uh, and I am going to have this time uh, iPhone uh, 6 Android 1510 landscape. Now, uh, again, I, I probably should move those things around. I need to do a little bit of work here. That's nicer. Uh, and Baal over here. Uh, Socrates or Seneca, wherever he is, can go over there. Whoops, wrong one. Um, and Mesoamerica America comes over here and so on. Now, if I change this uh, selfie, uh, the um, uh, human, humans only, and now go to this one, you'll see that it's changed throughout. Uh, forget scroll one, that was something from, some, some, from before. So this is synchronized text. Okay, we don't have any more time to play with that. We can preview it. Uh, using preview HTML5 publication using the globe thing down here and that's going to appear in my browser um, and uh, that's going to use the settings I've already got from my um, my export uh, and if I just double click on there you'll see this is zooming in it allows me to pinch and zoom and there's quite a lot of detail there so you really get resolution when you're doing photo zoom so that's quite a good way of working but what I wanted to show you was exporting. So that was Safari still. Export as HTML5 pub publication or use the export button uh, down here. It's exactly the same thing, it does the same thing. So we're gonna go to uh, HTML5 publication. Uh, and uh, I've already got my directory called app. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select it to do all of these things. Uh, why? Uh, because what will now happen is there's some uh, JavaScript uh, which will automatically select in the browser the correct size or the best fit size for my device when that is uploaded. So I've got four different versions. Each would be tailored if we'd had the time, we didn't have the time to the particular device to give a really seamless experience. So don't, don't expect things to automatically move around. It never really works. If you want an app-like experience, then you've got to create each page separately. But using adaptive layout, that's not very difficult. And uh, then it's going to give uh, the correct one of these uh, for my iPad Pro or my iPhone 6. Um, now let's look at some options. Uh, image resolution we're not going to play with. Fonts, we do want to collect fonts. Check you have copyright permission to do that. Uh, we can convert sections to page stacks, and I'd love to show you that feature. It's really good, but we haven't got time right now. Table of contents, again, you can use a section. Uh, if you've got a named section in page layout, again, not today, but some other time, uh, to create a, a sort of special designer table of contents. It can be very, very cool indeed. Loading page, we have changed this. We've used the Ingenios logo. Um, uh, and that's what appears when we load now, instead of the Quark Express one. Uh, we can, I've actually turned off all the reader controls. I want to give a very app-like experience. If I turn those back on again, you get a web, web pub-like experience. But I, I don't want to have a kind of publication experience in this. I want to have an app experience. Uh, analytics, I'm not using them. You can if you want. Social sharing. You do not need the Facebook app ID to be able to share it on Facebook, okay? Um, 
Uh, but uh, you can do that if you want to use some of the app features. Okay, so we're going to export that now. Um, and uh, selected folder will do contain some files, fine, no problem. Uh, off it goes. Uh, okay, I'm going to collect the fonts. Now, while that's exporting, let's go to Yummy FTP. And in fact, I, I already exported one of these earlier. Uh, and we will now, uh, and I, I, I dragged that across onto FTP. So, if you are doing HTML5 publication, you must have an FTP server. If you do not know what an FTP server is, then either find someone in your IT department who does, or, or, or do a short online course, because you, you can't do this otherwise. The only way to do web publishing is to publish to uh, a web server. If you just try to, try to run it off your own computer, it won't work properly. There's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, which is the same reason why you can't just uh, publish your uh, additional spare hard drive to the web and use that as a website. Um, we won't go into them now, but it's very important. So if you're having difficulties, that is absolutely crucial. Um, on the Mac, I'm using Yummy FTP. There are lots of FTP programs uh, on, on both platforms and Linux as well. Uh, and I've got some web space, which is on my website. Now, um, I've, I've already done this earlier because it takes a little bit of time to upload. So let's go back now to uh, my devices. And hopefully, um, if that's, uh, whoops. So we're just going to refresh that. And it loads up uh, and uh, it's correctly identified the, uh, the iPad, uh, so the, the iPhone version. This is slightly different from what we're looking at uh, because uh, I, I put some other, I put the scroll zone thing on there, which, which we, we did talk about very briefly. And again, if I change that round, uh, I, I got the size wrong, but it, it's found the correct one. And if I now go to my uh, iPad, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open this on the iPad, and you can see it loads up. And if I now uh, double click on here, um, or tap on there, you get this, this amazing uh, quality of picture. Um, of course, if you've got uh, the camera crew reflected in the window there, they're also going to be on there. But um, that is uh, interactive uh, HTML5 publishing. So we've learned basically two things today. So I know I haven't gone through um, all of the, uh, uh, the special things you can do. I think they're self-explanatory. You can play with them to your heart's content. But the, what is not self-explanatory to me is the creating new layouts. So you're going to go to uh, duplicate uh, layout. Uh, it's got to be digital layout. This will not work with a print layout. If you try to export for digital from a print layout, it'll be grayed out. And then you export, the, you, you create the, the version you want. And with the adaptive scaling on, it will move stuff around generally. It won't ever be quite right, but particularly if you want the text to synchronize, if you're going to be playing with the text, you've got 10 versions of this for 10 different devices, you want to have synchronized box attributes and content on for text. And you can do the same for pictures as well if you're going to be changing pictures. Then uh, when you go to export uh, HTML5 uh, publication, then you just select all the ones you want. And uh, the Quark Express uh, web app, underlying web app, will then choose the correct one, the best one for the device you're on. In the options, you've got a number of options. The, the most important one to me is this loading page, where rather than having Quark Express's uh, loading icon, you can have your own one. Um, that is uh, literally uh, all we've got time for uh, this week. We'll come back to some of those in a few weeks' time. We're going to definitely look at adaptive uh, layout and scaling and all those features. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope that's been useful. Uh, I hope it's opened your eyes to some of the possibilities. Um, we haven't even begun to see the kinds of things that can be done with the power of designing Quark Express coupled with the ability to distribute as a smart app. And Using the same methodology, you can also distribute as iOS. That, again, is for another episode. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Martin Turner, author of Desktop Publishing with Quark Express 2017. Uh, see you next time. In the meantime, happy quarking.